What up friends, Liron here coming at you from Paris and today if some of you are following me on Instagram you may have seen um, that I've started doing a lot of sketches like this one uh, over here. I cannot see myself so hopefully you can see this well. I'm using my iPhone not my camera. So this one I did a few days ago and today I went a little wild and did a huge one like this. Hopefully you can see it. Um, so yeah, what I want to do, this is what I call spontaneous sketching. And the reason why I call it like that, and many people do it, many people just call it different names. Um, the reason I call it like that is because there is no, not a lot of order behind it. So I'm not actually building all the guidelines and advanced stuff like that. I just go straight to it. I look at the scene I'm drawing and I'm just trying to find one interesting detail to start with. So for this example, I just started simply from the top and went to the bottom. It's not the most organized approach, but it's really fun. And I really recommend you try it. Um, so today I'm gonna show you just how I approach this uh, using uh, one reference picture I actually took this morning. So let's get to it. Okay, friends, so I'm gonna apologize in advance as this video may be a little shakier than usual. I'm really using an improvised setup here. And I have the reference image in front of me and I will show it to you uh, wherever is comfortable, top, left, right, bottom, <laughs> some corner of the screen. And it's actually, as I said, something I took today. And so it's an original image by me <laughs> and uh, I may add a link to it. So anyway, let's just get uh, straight into business here. And what I want to do is just, as I said, pick a point and start the uh, sketch there. So let me just bring my reference a little closer. I'm looking at it on my laptop. Um, so first I'm going to start uh, with the roof actually. So uh, the first line I recognize is a line going like that. And I'm just going to get it in here. I'm just trying to think generally, uh, not to start too high, too low. So I'm just going to start here and pull a diagonal line like that. Now I may have not gotten the angle to be perfect. That's okay because this is spontaneous sketching. You cannot be too accurate in it. And then I look at another line and I see this line going to the front up like this. And then we have another one like this. And then another one dropping down parallel to this one. And finally, this line, because of the angle, goes much lower and somewhere around here. So I'm just going to pull it downwards like that. And now we basically got the side of the building here. So I'm just going to continue with it. There's a little jagged area. And then it moves down uh, vertically like that. And I just want to check and make sure you can see this. So let me take a look here. Good, looks good, okay. Now, I'm continuing and we have another line here, parallel. So I'm just gonna pull that one down like that. And I'm gonna end it a little higher because as you uh, hopefully can see, there's a car uh, that sort of comes here. We won't uh, draw it now. Now, before I get to the rest of the building, there's another one at the back and I wanna get it in now. Uh, just because I'm already here. But let's just close this area of the roof so if you carefully study the reference, there's a set of parallel lines running here that makes the roof look three-dimensional, okay? So I'm just moving parallel to the original line like that. And that's basically it. Now we're gonna do the other building here at the back. So we have one line like that. And by the way, I'll take this opportunity to explain that really doing this on location is ideal because it's uh, first of all it's I find it easier and I think it's a good form of practice to actually draw what you see really in front of you um, but the second best thing you have is from image reference so this is what I'm showing you now so you want to look at the distances between different um, parts just to judge how good of a job you're doing. So for this example, this distance between here, so you see this line and the distance here should be similar to this one. I got it a little off, but that's fine. And I'm going to pull down another uh, vertical line like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, really, this is a bit less organized than maybe what you're used to. 
Uh, but it's a really fun approach uh, to doing this. And I really like it. And I think it really works on uh, many of the skills, like observational skills, because you're actually forced to each line that you're doing um, sort of judge its uh, length, the angle, stuff like that. Okay, dropping another line here. And that's basically it with this um, building from the back. There are a few windows. We're not going to get into that now. So now we want to continue this uh, roof here. Now I have a very <laughs> challenging angle. So I'm going to try and do my best and just pull out a long line to the left. Okay. Just going to try and get it in one go. I may completely, utterly mess this up. Whew, safe. <laughs> Somehow I got it. Um, so that's the bottom part of the roof. And there should be another line coming right under it, which I'll probably legendarily mess up, but let's go for it as well. Like this, just to represent this has some uh, uh, width here. Now we have the uh, line on the top of the roof that I wanna get in, but stop somewhere around here because we have this thing with the chimneys. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it like that and stop. And you see the beautiful thing about this approach is that it's so different from the other ones. You don't plan anything and, you know, it may uh, come to haunt you, uh, haunt you uh, back later, but uh, for now we're doing good, I think. So now the line of the chimneys is somewhat parallel to this line. So I'm going to just drop a line here like that. This is, by the way, really similar to the isolating uh, lines uh, exercise, basic exercise that I uh, shared a while ago. So I'm going to link it here. It seems like this <laughs> video really was uh, re received really well, actually surprised me. And you want to check that out. It's actually taken from a course uh, that I've been uh, working on and I recently uh, launched about drawing uh, just for beginners. And you may want to check it out. So there is also a link uh, in that other video and I'll also add one here. Uh, because the basic drawing skills really are not that difficult. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people have this uh, mental uh, blocking that prevents them first from starting. They, th they think, uh, you know, it's some kind of um, talent or something you're uh, born with. And it's really not. It's really uh, just stuff you can really get better at, okay? Now, because I'm filming with my iPhone, it may cut the video uh, in the mid uh, mid recording. So hopefully that won't happen. And if it does, there will be a funny cut. <laughs> You'll forgive me for that. Um, I'm actually here uh, in Paris um, for another uh, uh, week and a half, uh, something like that. Uh, after which I will uh, be back to my normal uh, environment and... I feel like I'm saying uh, a lot of times in, the, in this video. Oh, uh, uh, sorry about that. I'll be back to my normal environment in which I can uh, better record, I think, a little better. But is less cool in terms of inspiration and beauty. Uh, just Paris is a really nice city. And this is basically most of the roof. I don't even want to continue it too much. We can just go ahead and close it like that. Um, now what we want to do is add, there's this uh, little thingy that's meant to uh, bring water down from the roof. I really, no way in hell I know how to call that. So you will add it in a comment below. Let me know what this thing is called. I know what it's called in Hebrew, Marzev, but in English, no way. <laughs> so uh, you will have to help me on that one. And the next step is, and sorry about that, that happens occasionally. The next step is actually to add the windows. So this is what I'm going to do now. So first window, I'm going to come here. And I'm just really improvising. I'm just looking and trying to figure out the approximate distance here. Okay. So that's one window. Then we have a second one. It's smaller and it's about the same distance from here. So I'm just going to start it here in this point like this like this, like this. Uh, I'm sorry, there's an ambulance, I think. <laughs> I hope you can still hear me well. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh man, drawing is just so complicated. Uh, but uh, I don't know, can you draw a square? Can you go like this and then like this and like this 
and like this because if you can you're kind of able to draw already <laughs> uh, now I know it's a little more complex than that but really not that much uh, so this is why I always uh, tell people people are surprised sometimes to hear that I believe that really anyone can learn this um, and I in the beginning I didn't understand uh, why they're so surprised but I guess it's normal yeah uh, a lot of people believe that uh, drawing is something reserved to some uh, gifted in, gifted individuals and actually a lot of artists say that too um, sorry to uh, break it to you <laughs> I disagree uh, but yeah everyone's entitled to their own opinion now um, we're I don't want to get into too many of the details at the bottom so maybe I'll just get through them in time lapse and I'm gonna cut the video uh, deliberately because I know if I won't the iPhone will do it for me so I'll do that right now and I will continue. Um, I think, <sighs> what should we do here? I'm really not sure. You know what? Let me get uh, the, some of the details here in time lapse and then I'll come back and do some of the shadowing in real time. Let's get to it. Okay, so as I guessed, the iPhone decided to pull a trick on me <laughs> and uh, to stop recording. So I had to pause to transfer some of the videos because it ran out of space and blah, blah. Anyway, now we can continue. So um, I just mentioned and it got cut off that uh, all of this work I did for the fence and stuff like that was just to get in that uh, tree here in the middle, that half dead tree, because uh, sometimes you'll find that you want to start with uh, one layer um, in order to get another one. So before I did the tree, I just wanted to figure out where uh, the rest of the details are. Okay, now sorry for another weird cut. Uh, just a few recording issues. Anyway, um, now what we have basically is a sketch, a complete sketch, but it still doesn't look good because it's very flat. We don't have any uh, lights or darks here. So what I'm going to do now is actually do just that. I'm going to add the uh, shading, shading uh, to everything here. Now I'm going to do most of it in time lapse, just pulling a few uh, uh, power lines here. I'm going to do that mostly in time lapse because it's just very time consuming and repetitive. But I will explain the logic behind it. So light comes from this side here, okay? And so this makes this side of the buildings very dark and also all of the bottom part here, which is why I didn't use a lot of details here because it's very dark and where it's dark you don't need to put in too many details into inside the shadows um, so uh, basically we have a dark area here a dark area here and these two spill into the street darkening everything here including this tree and these walls of the buildings are lighter okay so it's going to create a really cool effect i think you're going to love this um, we also have some shadow here and on these sides so I'm just gonna get started and you'll see how the result is and hopefully you'll love it uh, just a word on the technique I'll just demonstrate it's very simple uh, all you do is what I call um, cross hatching or hatching rather in this example uh, you just start by drawing these sets of parallel lines and the key here is to just do that in layers so you're gonna you want to add a first layer that covers all the things that are a little darker and then continue on and darken them uh, further as you go okay so I'm just gonna lay down that first layer uh, let's see how it goes just wanted to mention something that I find really interesting um, so uh, any of you who are really following uh, this channel know that 
I uh, sort of uh, focused on watercolor recently, uh, mostly watercolor. And what it really helped me with is even in sketching, it just helped me recognize, uh, better recognize values and changes in darkness and stuff like that. So this is really something that I'm so happy about. Even uh, I think you'll experience this a lot as you learn new stuff uh, in art, drawing, whatever it is you do. Uh, sort of you learn one medium or one technique or you do one field and the knowledge sort of bleeds into other areas and help you with them and helps you with them as well. Uh, so just a really cool thing I wanted to mention and my ability to draw, uh, to understand where uh, light areas are, where dark areas are. Uh, a lot of it is actually thanks to watercolors. So just wanted to mention that, uh, give credit where credit is due. Um, so now uh, I just started uh, darkening everything and we also have the details that will pop by darkening uh, because this area has some shadow as you can see under the windows, uh, these inner areas inside the windows. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on like that. You see it's just very repetitive and hopefully it'll make this entire thing pop. So I think we are now done with the first layer of uh, shading and notice how I left this roof of the car white just to help bring it to the front a little. And now what we want to do is add the second one. Now we, I'm just going to look for stuff that are darker and darken them. So these sides are significantly darker. This one's darker. We have a shadow here. Uh, on the roof that's going to look really cool that's darker. Uh, this entire side of the building is darker. This one I think also is darker. I'm just going to go in and get all those details again in time lapse and you'll see how this comes into something uh, really nice. Also there's a bit of shadows here also next to this thing that I don't know again what his name is. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, friends, I think uh, this is it. So as you can see, I added a second layer of some shading here uh, just to add these shadows. I also added the shadows under the roof, under this. Um, some uh, shadows, darker ones here on the right side of the, of the buildings. Um, and also here, I made it extremely darker, this area specifically, because that's what it looks like in the reference. I brought out the bright, uh, the white or let's say gray of the car by darkening the area around it. Um, there are of course a few touches uh, you can add here, but it's mostly done now. Also notice how I used uh, this squib squiggly uh, lines to do the textures for the trees. Um, so this is it. I hope this one helped you. Uh, let's wrap up the video. Friends, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the different uh, the difference in quality of the audio and video. I'm using uh, different tools here. Uh, a little improvisation for you. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you like to see the process of stuff like this uh, and all of the detail detailed explanation, be sure to follow me on Snapchat and Instagram where I actually um, show you the process. Here's the final result uh, in case it was a little skewed due to the camera angle uh, and that's it i'll see you again in another video until then take care